here we are for another installation of Warcry Red Harvest. Yay! So, um, with the terrain here, uh, I decided just to paint one of the large platforms because I honestly can't wait to get one of these on the table for D&D, uh, &D, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so, what I'm doing here is I have a cheap makeup brush, and uh, honestly, I have a... Uh, Uncle Adam to thank for this one because um, from uh, Tabletop Minions because I honestly would never even have thought of using a cheap dollar store uh, makeup brush as a dry brush but I gotta say honestly they work really well and you can grab a handful of them for you know a couple of bucks and you know it doesn't matter if it dies after you know a couple of uses because my normal dry brushes don't hold up to wear and tear very well anyway so what I've got here is Reaper's Saddle Brown over top of a Krylon Matte Coffee Bean Primer and Paint. So what I did here is to make life easier for myself, and I suggest that you do this, pick a primer color that is close to the primary color for the largest space on your terrain and or miniature. I did the same thing with my Blood Ravens, or I'm sorry, my Blood Angels, um, with my um, with my other terrain. Uh, I didn't prime it in just a black or a gray or a white. Uh, my original Warcry terrain, I actually primed in a sage color that I got from Walmart. So for this, since like I said, this was a matte coffee bean by Krylon. It's a very dark brown, and uh, it works very well when you throw a little bit of this uh, saddle brown over top of it. So uh, what, I do, what I'm doing here obviously is just a very heavy dry brush of the saddle brown and I'm trying to get it in every nook and cranny and area that I can. Um, I'm not really bothering to try not to hit the metallic parts and there's actually a theory behind that. So this is all chaos. Okay, so this is chaos terrain. It's supposed to be old and worn and crappy and, you know, who cares? So why not utilize that brown or those shades of brown along with the metallics? That way you don't have to give the metallics all that great of a coat of, you know, I, I in this case I used lead belcher. Um, but I don't have to get such a great coat of metal and it looks like there's spots of rust already built into the paint job it just saves some time and it actually looks pretty cool so here I'm using some heartwood brown also by Reaper and I just kind of put it in the same reservoir that I did the saddle brown and uh, it, it's gonna give the wood a kind of a yellowed uh, worn look like it's older wood and uh, it, it just kind of lightens up the dark matte coffee bean and the saddle brown just enough uh, to make it look like the wood has been used heavily and I'm gonna give this a light dry brush all over with heavy emphasis on the big open areas where people would be standing and walking around and uh, that's just gonna you know kind of bring the wood out and make it pop a little bit and it emphasizes the fact that that midsection there has probably seen a lot of action. So at this point, uh, my camera had run out of batteries and I had no idea. So what we've got here is lead belcher and I'm just kind of going over lightly all of the areas that are, that have the metallic, um, banding on the wood and any of the fasteners and the decor like the decorative pieces like the different gargoyle heads and the, you know, the ram heads and whatnot um, I'm also doing the manacles and chains uh, you will have to look out for that there are several pieces that have uh, manacles and chains either on a skeleton or not on a skeleton and like I said earlier I'm just kind of utilizing this uh, 
the brown to make it look kind of old and worn. So I'm not even going to give it a second coat. I'm just going to let it stand like it is. This step, I took some wraith bone, uh, which is the same color that Citadel of Citadel's uh, contrast primer, and uh, I diluted it down with quite a bit of water, and then I uh, wicked some of the paint off of my brush, and I'm just going over the bones uh, with a 
pretty hefty coat of wraith bone and the reason why I'm doing this is because one of my favorite contrast paints is Skeleton Horde. It really makes bones pop and it makes it look really good. So all of the bones, uh, the skeleton and whatnot, all of those are going to get Wraith Bone. And I'm just kind of like slopping it on there just a little bit. Just making sure it doesn't get too thick. But just kind of, you know, just, you know, throwing some paint on these different pieces just to give it some color and then I'm going to go back over with that contrast paint so once again this is another quick paint job that doesn't really have to be perfect you can just kind of make sure that the wraith bone gets on most of the bigger areas and any of the darker areas just end up looking kind of good like rib cages or whatnot um, you can just kind of graze over the edges of the rib cage if you want and just leave the uh, insides of the rib cage a darker brown um, but that's up to you So from here out, um, I am putting Skeleton Horde on all of the bones, and this gives them kind of a dirty, um, yellowed sort of a, a color, and it makes them look really good. It makes them pop. Skeleton Horde is actually one of my favorite contrast paints, along with uh, Black Templar and uh, some of the other um, covering ones the ones that cover a little bit better like uh the ultramarines blue and uh a, f a few other ones i can't name them all offhand but um skeleton horde and unfortunately as you can see here i you know sometimes i i kind of forget that i have a camera above me now so i'll pull the the piece a little further in eh, my apologies <laughs> um also uh, I did forget a couple of bones here, and as you can see, I'm going back with that wraith bone, and I'm uh, putting some wraith bone on everything that I missed. So there was a, a skull and uh, I think a femur as well that I missed. Uh, so here, now normally I don't use my expensive known oil wash uh, for terrain, but I have to mix up some more of the wash that I usually use. Uh, I got the recipe from uh, Black Magic Craft and I believe he got it from somewhere else but he's improved on it. So uh, that's what I usually use but in this case I didn't have any ready. So here's what it looks like on the video. Um, these two places that I'm pointing out are uh, spots where I'm going to have to redo the primer. Uh, I took some final shots here with my phone uh, so it'll look a little bit better, a little higher quality. And uh, this is how it turned out after the washing and everything else. And I, I think it looks pretty amazing for such a quick job. It really didn't take me very long. Um, like I said, the best thing to do is to use the same color for primer that you plan on using as your main color for a, a big piece of it um, hopefully you've liked what you've seen and you know like like and subscribe and 
consider joining me on Patreon. Thank you.